Texas. 850 miles from Orange to El Paso. 900 miles from Brownsville to Texline. Thousands upon thousands of highways and dirt roads in the middle. Exploring Texas ain't no small vacation, friend. It's a lifetime endeavor. But what if you don't have years, but just one single day? Well, that's where we come in. From the well-known landmarks to the completely obscure dives and hideaways, and all within a day's reach. So let's hit the road. I'm Chet Garner, and this is The Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Today we're headed to a genteel Northeast Texas town that was built right on the bayou. We're also gonna head deep into the thick of the swamp itself. So hold on, because this could get scary. Jefferson, here we come. Jefferson! Jefferson is about three hours east of Dallas in the far reaches of Northeast Texas, making it a bit out of the way for most Texans. However, for you day trippers in Tyler, Longview, Marshall, and Texarkana, it's just down the road. But why so scary, you ask? Well, Jefferson is a town of many titles, which we'll get to. But one title it definitely doesn't own is typical small Texas town. The history of Jefferson really goes back to this waterway right here, the Big Cypress Bayou, which isn't as big as it used to be. But up until the 1870s, the water was so deep they could actually get steamboats here from New Orleans which made this whole area and Jefferson a thriving port city. So let's go explore it. And if we're talking Jefferson history, then there's no better place to start than the Jefferson Historical Museum, occupying the county's old federal building and having an almost endless expanse of, well, lots of historical stuff. You always come to these old towns and you're like, oh, I wish I could have seen it in its glory day. Jefferson's location on Big Cypress Bayou truly defined this town. With the steamboats constantly coming in, Jefferson became the second most active port in Texas behind Galveston, and in 1870 was the sixth largest city in the state. So the steamboats would come up, park right here, and then this is where the town thrived, and we are about right here right now. But the steamboats brought more than just cotton to Jefferson. They brought money and all the things that come with it, culture, prestige, and affluence. Jefferson was such an affluent city, you had people who came here from all over the world and the people who settled here had often traveled and so they brought back all kind of crazy things and, and a lot of that stuff ended up here at this museum through one way or another. Pretty cool. Private writings of Sam Houston. I have to honor to be your, I can't read his handwriting, Sam Houston. <laughs> from top to bottom, every room is overflowing. Man, a history person could spend literally hours in here. I mean, an entire day trip could be made in this museum. But you know we don't have time for that. So in summary, Jefferson was not so much Wild West, but Deep South. Less cattle, more high cotton. Less cowboy, more Southern gentlemen. I do declare. And nothing would be more day tripper appropriate than to explore Jefferson in style. This is a beautiful day here in Jefferson, Texas. I must say, this is the finest port city architecture I have seen west of the great Mississippi. Well, hello, how are you, gentlemen? Whew. I do believe I shall take a rest and uh, breathe the cold vapors of the wind here. It ought good for my carriage, or deglatage, if you will. <laughs> well, I do declare, my heavens, Tis not water, but southern sweet tea pouring forth from the ground. Oh, this mustache is getting a little, little, little prickly on my mouth there. But a proper gentleman never walks out of the house without his mustache on, and I shall not be seen in public without. Ha <laughs> yes, good fortune. It appears my steamboat is on schedule. Yeah, Jefferson might be a bit different than it was at high water, but there's still much of the past to see, and the best way is by horse-drawn carriage. 
Jefferson has over 100 designated historic structures. Probably one of the most famous is this one right here, the Excelsior House. It's an old hotel that has housed guests like Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, artists like Steven Spielberg, Oscar Wilde, Lady Bird Johnson even. Can you imagine all the history in the rooms in there? There's the Jefferson Hotel, a functioning Carnegie Library, and a place called Murder's Alley. There's simply too many stories to tell, and that's not even to mention all the historic homes in Jefferson, many of which have been converted into bed and breakfast, earning Jefferson the title of B&B Capital of Texas. Pretty cool to have so many original historic homes, but how about a historic mobile home? Hey, thank you. Thank you. The private rail car for the infamous railroad tycoon and robber baron Jay Gould who at one point owned an estimated 15% of our country's entire railroad tracks. This was a way to travel in style. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Maybe 11, 12. Are you kidding me? This is a house on wheels. As you see, Gould was extravagantly wealthy. Money he supposedly obtained by any means necessary. Influence, bribery, blackmail. I don't believe even these sinks could wash the blood off of Jay Gould's hands. This would have been the equivalent of having your own private jet nowadays. I'm not condoning how he got his riches, but man, did he live large once he had them. Yes, Gould spared no expense on his Atalanta rail car, which ironically sits today in Jefferson, Texas, a town Gould intentionally bypassed when he brought the railroad through this part of Texas. Well, last laughs on you, Mr. Gould. Ha, ha, ha. I'm hungry. So this is the hamburger store. And you can probably guess what they serve. Yep, Italian food. All right, I was just kidding about that. It's hamburgers. But not just any hamburgers. The tasty, juicy, old-fashioned, humongo kind of hamburgers. The types folks drive in from all over to eat. We come to do the arts and crafts and look around, but we're here for the hamburger. At the end of the day, I gotta eat. That's right. Yeah. Folks come in from all over to eat here, even China. So what do you think? Amazing. Amazing? <laughs> yeah. Can you get burgers like this in China? No. <laughs> I want to try real American flavor. Yeah, this is the place. Yeah. yeah. The burgers look delicious, I know. But you're probably wondering about all the money on the walls which also travels great distances to grace the walls of the hamburger store. But what's the story? Well, these dollars are left as a love offering to repay the hamburger store and its owner for feeding countless hurricane refugees from Louisiana. When we come, we like to look and remember where we put our money, but we have all kinds of dollar bills on the wall. So you sort of leave a little memento. Absolutely. And you come back and oh, park it back. And it's really neat. Get that fuzzy feeling. Absolutely. <laughs> With so many ways to order a burger here, I just asked the owner to pick one for me, which might have been a mistake. You know, you roll the dice when you order off a recommendation, and today I got way more than I bargained for. They told me to go for the jalapeno chili cheddar burger, which evidently comes with a waterfall of chili and jalapenos and two one-third patties. There's no way you can eat this with your hands. But I might as well try. I did it. <laughs> I gotta go back in here with silverware. But look at this. All the goody goodness of a burger, and then you throw chili on top of it, jalapenos and cheese. How could that not be delicious? You stop at a place called the hamburger store, they better have a good hamburger. And this is a delicious hamburger. And when I finish tackling this behemoth, it's time to leave my own love offering. Bye, con Dios. But now to find the perfect spot. What? You think I'm actually gonna show you where I'm putting this? No way. You gotta come find it. Game on, day trippers. You know, after that chili burger, I could use a little something sweet. And I've got just the place in mind. The Jefferson General Store. <laughs> I love this place. You know, the word general just about sums it up because there is no rhyme or reason to all the stuff you find. Candies, Texas knickknacks, and general shenanigans in a general store kind of way. Generally speaking, of course. 
<laughs> I love that sound. What else in the world makes that sound? But beyond just stopping in to browse the general goods, <laughs> I've come to this general store with a very specific purpose, as in homemade pecan pralines, using an age-old secret recipe. Uh, you know, making the pralines, we're adding several ingredients, some which I can't tell you or I'd no longer be working here. Uh, we're gonna put them into this pot and we're gonna mix them in. We're gonna add some pawns and spoon it onto our marble over here and that's gonna let them set up and harden. And that's it, ready to eat. Man, these pralines look unbelievable. And so does this deal. A five cent cup of coffee? There's gotta be a catch. Okay, so what's with this five cent coffee thing I see? It was five cents for the coffee, five bucks for the cup, something like that? No, no, five cents for the coffee. So five cents for the coffee, two dollars for the cream, two bucks for the sugar. No, that comes free. No way. Seriously? Seriously. That is awesome. Look at that. Is that I, gonna get me a cup of coffee? That'll get you a cup of coffee. Let me get it for you. Man, you guys are doing things the old-fashioned way. That's right. Five cent cup of coffee. And this is the most delicious praline I've ever had. I think I'm just gonna hang here the rest of the day. Have another cup of coffee and about another 20 of these pralines. Don't you dare me, because I'll do it. So we've now visited the brighter, happier side of Jefferson. But what about the darker side? The visitor brochures call Jefferson the B&B capital of Texas. But what they don't advertise is its other well-known title. The most haunted small town in Texas. I'm scared already. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Now, as you can imagine, every old home in Jefferson has its stories, but none is believed to be more haunted than this one right here. Welcome to the Grove. Let's take a tour, shall we? Built in 1861 as a wedding gift for Frank and Minerva Stilly, the Grove gets its name from the towering pecans that shade the home in shadow and mystery. Okay, so this is Mitchell Whittington, the man who lives in the most haunted home in Jefferson. Well, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> man, this must be a trip of a place to live. It's interesting. Uh, I have to say, I never would have uh, anticipated this in my life. Uh, but it's not scary. It's not like living in the Adams family house. It's really a, an interesting place because it's kind of like a little peek into the other side. With many rooms furnished in period decor, the Grove is haunting enough without stories. But Mitchell's room by room tour brings the Grove to life. Or death, brings it, brings it to death. This was once the uh, master bedroom to the house. We have uh, had some activity in this room that's interesting. The first is probably one of our most famous spirits called the Lady in White. And my favorite story about her comes from when this house was a restaurant in 1990 and they were doing dinner theater one night. The lighting tech had her lighting board set up on the front porch so it wouldn't take up space in the dining room. She looked over, she saw a lady in a long white dress walking beside the house here and uh, she assumed it was one of the actresses so she hollered at her. She goes, excuse me, there's no door on that side of the house. You're going the wrong way. Uh, the woman just kept walking, so she leaned over the railing and she you know, saw her going down to this part of the house. The lady turned and took a left and stepped up through a wall of the house. And uh, I've seen her several times, as is my That's wife. That's I was going to ask, yeah. Uh, a lot of people have seen her throughout the years. You look back to the original uh, construction of the house, with this being the back, it's probably that she's not stepping up through a wall. It's probably more that she's stepping up onto a back porch. Back porch, yeah. Coming yeah. through a wall that, uh, or a door in the wall that would have been here and coming across there. But the lady in white, or in this case, the badly costumed man lady in white, is just one of the Grove's many visitors. We had uh, one of the former owners, Charlie Young, the barber, come back and visit. He came back to visit the daughter of a friend of ours. And she starts describing a, a very distinguished looking African American gentleman. And at one point, Tammy turned around and said, did he look anything like this? And she goes, that's the guy, he was oh, here. Oh, wow. I said, Kenzie, that's Mr. Charlie, the barber. He, he died in the 1930s, you saw a ghost. And I thought, wow, that's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> These are just a few of the almost countless stories. And while we haven't had a personal experience yet, no visitor is safe. We also have had a lot of things happen on the tour in here. We've had people get tapped on the shoulder and poked in the side. Uh, we had uh, a, a group of us were all standing around. I was telling some of these stories one day. All of a sudden, the lady squealed and jumped about a foot in the air. And, bah, you know, startled all of us. I was like, are you OK? And she said, we're all just standing around you know, listening. All of a sudden, I felt somebody pop me on the bottom. <laughs> she said, <laughs> and I looked, and my husband's across the room. And I thought, 
it's one of these strangers. One of these strangers <laughs> has touched my bottom. She goes, boy, I was going to slap somebody <laughs> silly. Yeah. She, but I looked and nobody was near me. I said, I am so sorry. But to Mitchell and his wife, Tammy, ghostly experiences are just part of everyday life. It was getting late, and we're both trying to finish a chapter in the books that we're reading so we could turn in. And as we're sitting there reading, suddenly the light goes, click, turned itself off. So I found it, and click, turned it back on. I was like, would you guys stop that? You know, and that is. <laughs> as you can imagine, living in the Grove has given Mitchell a very interesting perspective on life and the afterlife. After living here for 10 years, what I've come to believe is that uh, what we have are former owners coming back because they love the place so much, just to check on it. And I understand that because um, the Grove has become part of my heart and soul, and I plan on coming back after I'm gone. <laughs> Yeah. So 100 years from now, people see a man with long hair and a beard. Probably just... on the front porch. I love that rocking chair. Oh, yeah. I love sitting out there early in the morning with a cup of coffee. So whoever lives here 100 years from now, I'll talk about the rocking chair ghost, how that chair slowly starts rocking <laughs> and you smell a coffee in the air and that'll be me. <laughs> That's uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> as nice as Mitchell is, ain't no way I'd ever be his roommate. In fact, the Grove is enough to scare me straight out of town. Okay, not literally, but it is time to move down the road to see the natural side of Northeast Texas. We're headed out of Jefferson to a place of uncertainty. Well, because that's its name, Uncertain Texas, a town built in the swamps of Caddo Lake. To take it in, we're headed to Caddo Lake State Park. The lake itself is massive, crossing the border between Louisiana and Texas. But if you're expecting the normal sweeping lake views, better think again. This is Caddo, and the only place like Caddo is Caddo. It is just so uniquely beautiful out here. The cypresses, the Spanish moss. You know, it's hard to believe, but Caddo Lake is actually the only natural lake in Texas, meaning that all other lakes are really just reservoirs created by dams. So there's really no other place in our state like this one. It's just, there's just something about it. It's got its own beautiful Caddo thing. Just the kind of thing I want to go explore with some help. All right, so Caddo is not the kind of place you want to go alone. So I found John Wynn with Caddo Outback Tours, the man who knows this lake. Am I right? I should. I grew up here. Okay. We're going in, in an 18-foot go devil boat. It's basically a swamp boat made to go through real shallow water, thick aquatic vegetation, over logs, stuff like that. And it's ideal for Caddo because about half of Caddo is like a swamp. A dense, shallow swamp formed by a huge natural log jam called the Great Raft. Every time a year has its own look and its own feel. In the wintertime like this, you, you get uh, kind of a mystical look to it. All the green is gone and all you have left is the gray Spanish moss and the gray trees and stuff. It's almost like coming out and shooting photography in black and white. It, you sort of feel like you're on a movie set or a winter wonderland kind of thing. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then in the spring, you get the new growth. Everything is fresh and alive. This area up here will be totally covered in all kinds of aquatic plants. Uh, uh, everything from real small plants like watermelon and duckweed to the large lotus pads that grow on the water. You know, I've been a lot of places, but have truly never seen anything quite like this. So beyond the beauty, uh, I bet there's a lot of things out here that'll bite you. Not really, it's really? not that bad. Uh, we have alligators and we have cotton mouths and stuff like that, but um, I haven't lost anybody yet. <laughs> what, what do people come out here to hunt? Well, uh, a lot of duck hunters hunt here on Caddo. Caddo's unique uh, with its duck blinds. It's the only public lake in Texas that I'm aware of that has privately owned duck blinds. Caddo's a great fishing lake. It's a good all-around lake. We have uh, bass, crappie, catfish. So many parts of Texas are just absolutely breathtaking. Tall mountains or rolling hills, open prairies or dense swamps like Caddo Lake. You could say a man like me feels pretty blessed to call this land home. Listen how quiet that is. Just a couple locusts in the trees. Some wind blowing through the moss. You know, don't tell anyone. It's not about the barbecue or the museums. It's about these moments right here that keeps me day tripping. But while beautiful, you get out here and you start staring up at the trees for too long, and you get real lost real quick. Hey! Hey, buddy! Stop! I've been here two days! Please! 
right, he'll be fine. So many visitors get turned around out here that the sheriff has John on speed dial to come and rescue him. But if you know what to look for, the trail of old license plates can guide you home. Caddo is a beautiful place, but despite the abundant animal life, I haven't seen so much as a bullfrog. But with John's tracking skills, we find a new friend. It's a beaver. Up and down, up and down, maybe hunting, maybe just cruising around, but then it's back home to his den. Bye-bye, beaver buddy. What an incredible trip. As night falls over the bayou, a new scent takes to the breeze. Not so much live fish, but fried fish. Now, I don't know about you, but being out here kind of makes me hungry. And I see a spot just around the bend. River Bend Restaurant. The best spot for home cooking and waterfront dining. Just tie off your boat and then get down to business. All right, so this is Johnny Wisdom, the owner of this little eatery out here on Caddo Lake. Absolutely. Man, this is it, this place is hopping and the food looks delicious. It absolutely is. Great. This is definitely a destination restaurant. People can pull up in their boats and bring the I families in. A little place, in. yeah, that has yeah. almost as much boat parking as car yeah, parking. You can yeah. come in your swimsuit or your coat and tie. We have a place for everyone here. What do they order when they come? What's the favorite thing here at our restaurant is probably the whole catfish, which is fresh from Kalita Bend. Is it always catfish? Always, it, for us. It's the best around for me. Really? Yeah, I love it. It's the best catfish, the hush puppies, the slaughtered, man, it'd be so good. <laughs> so you got, obviously, the filet. I did. And, but he cleaned it right off the bone. If you know how to eat them, you'll never get a bone, and the meat is sweeter. It's better with the whole fish than a really? filet. Everything here that we do is cooked from scratch. We wow. make our own coleslaw, our own hush puppies. They're very custom made. Oh, Everyone sure. Everyone should come see Caddo Lake in their life. Every Texan owes it to themselves to see well, this part. Everybody in this part of the world, the world. owes it to them. <laughs> While I am savoring this atmosphere, I'm getting hungry enough to eat the whole dang bayou. So being within spitting distance from Caddo Lake, I definitely had to get alligator, and I definitely had to get frog legs. And so I just got the sampler platter. Solved all my problems. It's got fried shrimp, fried alligator, and of course, fried frog legs. Mmm. We're good. But little did I know, the crew had never once eaten frog legs. All right, all right. It tastes just like chicken. Ah, uh -huh. what do you know? That's Bayou Bon Appetit. But the main course is still to come. Corn. What a day. A day trip to Jefferson feels completely familiar, yet completely different. It's a place of Texas charm, history, and nature that has withstood the test of time, and the kind which shall forever remain timeless. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. Chet Sippy Cup, Chet Sippy Cup, please, please. Nah, they never have Chet. Get across it. <laughs> it's not cinematic. <laughs> wow, well, I do declare, just because you have two railroads in this hotel on your property, I'm supposed to pay you double rent? Sir, this is a monopoly, and I shall not stand for it. I will continue to pass go. <laughs> So that is a monopoly, and I will not stand for it. Just wait till you land on Marvin Gardens, sir. I have you know I own Park Place and properties on Boardwalk, and when you come around to my properties, I shall be... Sorry. 
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condios, amigas.